Hey, what is going on, everybody? It's Ben Morgan of the Fins Up Network. Week 15 preview and prediction for our Miami Dolphins at home against the New York Jets. A game that really kind of feels a bit more important than I really anticipated it feeling at this point in time the way the season was going because we know what's coming up. And I don't think the Dolphins are going to look past this game knowing what's coming up. But if you lose to the Titans the way we did, I don't want to talk about that damn game anymore. But you know what happened there? We blew it at the end. We lose that game. If you lose against the Jets, and it's not that playoff seeding, it probably gets a little bit more questionable at that time. But then the, the playoffs and the division and everything gets a little bit more questionable because it's the Cowboys, it's the Ravens, it's the Bills. That is an end of the season gauntlet that not that we can't compete and win in those games. But man, if we were to lose two in a row going into that stretch, going what we went through last year with the injuries that we have this year, as the pressure really kind of comes in on this team, that's not what we want to face for the second straight season. So it starts on Sunday with hopefully a bounce back win against the Jets team that's coming off their best performance of the year and a 30 to six victory against the Texans. So we are I don't want to say we're going to have our hands full on Sunday. I'm hoping that's not the case, but one way or another, we're not looking past this team and we need to come back with a victory. So we're going to talk latest injury updates because, damn it, we're continuing to be bit by the injury bug. We're going to hit on the viewer questions that were submitted. We'll end with our final score prediction. Before we jump into all that, though, I got to hear from you. First and foremost, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you are doing that. Appreciate everyone that is getting subscribed and liking the videos, leaving comments. But speaking of leaving comments, what is your final score prediction? Drop it in the comments. Want to see how you think this game is going to end up? Let's carry on the conversation leading up until game time. As we do, we've got the full injury report going on the scroll. Yes, it's once again a long one. What we got a couple of names that highlight that injury report. So I'm actually getting to this video a little bit later this week than typical week. So I have a little bit more information. And the good news is, despite Tyreek Hill, Teron Armstead being listed as questionable, Teron Armstead appears to be able and ready to go for this one. So hopefully he's healthy enough to go. Hopefully he doesn't get rolled up against. Look at all of our offensive line injuries this year. We're getting rolled up on. Every single offensive line injury is a dude getting rolled up on. So hopefully that doesn't happen again this week. Teron Armstead, though, appears to be good to go despite the questionable tag. Now Tyreek Hill was told that he is going to be testing that ankle pregame. He's going to go in early, get some treatment, test it, see how that ankle reacts, see how he and the coaches feel. They will make a call from there. So he, at this point in time, is likely going to be a true game time decision. We're going to talk a little bit more about this next point a little bit later, but don't be surprised, you guys, if we see a more conservative game plan to protect Tua with this beat up offensive line and to kind of protect Tyreek as well because obviously if he's getting less playing time if he's getting less touches he's going to be a little bit healthier you would say because every week we're going out there with Tyreek and he's putting up just massive numbers numbers we've never seen before but he's getting hurt in the process every single week and now last week we rolled up that new ankle injury so we'll talk about this a little bit later but don't be surprised if we see a little bit more of a conservative play uh game plan here moving forward offensively more injury news real quick before we get to the viewer questions javon holland is listed as questionable i was told that it's a possibility that he may be active but might not play it might be one of those kind of uh situations that we've seen with the offensive line guys in the past may play but there's a possibility it's brandon jones and elijah campbell starting at safety because deshaun elliott is out for this one uh the dolphins also did activate or they should, they elevated cornerback Ethan Bonner from the practice squad. Xavier Howard is questionable with that hip injury. The elevation of a cornerback usually means eh, a couple of different things. I don't have any official word on Xavier Howard at this point, but Ethan Bonner was elevated to the 53-man roster for this game. But if there's one thing about this defense, I was told that they are hungry. They had one of their best weeks of practice. They are hungry to go out there and reprove themselves basically how they had been the last handful of games prior to the end of that game against the Titans. So we'll see how that goes, but hopefully this defense, Vic Fangio, has got things worked out. One last injury thing I did want to hit on, Liam Eikenberg is listed as questionable. I believe he had a calf in this one. If he cannot go, man, we are testing death because we signed Jonathan Harrison 
He was signed to the active roster earlier this week. Matt Skura was signed to the practice squad earlier this week. So if Liam Eikenberg can't go, look for potentially one of those two guys to have to end up being the, uh, one of the guys that starts at center. Now, to my knowledge, as of now, Matt Skura was not elevated from the practice squad, so it would likely be Harrison. Otherwise, Lester Cotton could potentially be an option as well. He's been getting some run at center uh, throughout the last couple of weeks here at practice. And the team is also starting to cross-train Kendall Lamb at guard with all of the injuries that we have sustained along the offensive line. We need bodies, and we need bodies at all of those positions. So Kendall Lamb getting cross-trained at guard as well. Let's jump into those questions. Thanks to everyone that submitted one. I try to get to as many as possible while keeping the, the video at a at a decent length. So let's just get on with the thing. First one from, from uh, Sandman. Will being without Connor Williams be our Achilles heel for the rest of the season? I the, the fan in me wants to say, no, we will be fine. But try to go back in time and find a team that's essentially down four of their five starting offensive linemen that made a deep playoff run. I didn't do the research on it, but I'm willing to bet that there's really not that many people out there. And it's crazy because you take Connor Williams away, which means you pull Liam Eikenberg from one of his guard spots where he was actually doing okay the last few weeks. Well, you pull him to center where he struggled, and now you got to find more depth at, at the guard positions because Robert Hunt's still out. Isaiah Wynn, obviously, is still out. We have questions with the tackle position still. As you continue to pull more guys away from this, your offensive line just gets weaker and weaker. And obviously, as we know, football is won in the trenches. I'm not breaking any news here. It's great to have good quarterbacks, accurate, powerful arms, good speedy wide receivers, tall receivers. That's all great. That's the sexy stuff. Football is won in the trenches. And right now, offensively, that is where we are hurting. So unfortunately, yes, if we falter late, that is exactly where I think that the blame for lack of a better term, likely would have to go. Next one here from Dion Cooper. Do you think Mike McDaniel can learn to call a tough guy game? You have to line up against the man in front of you and beat him. Stop trying to be cute and witty. And yeah, and that last part is rings so true, especially we're, when we're inside, what, the 5, 10 yard line? Because coaches, play callers in general, they always think, I'm going to outsmart the guy across from me. And that's what their mentality is. And that's kind of what Mike McDaniel I think he really trusts himself, and that's what he wants to do. It's like, well, you think I'm going to do this? No, I'm going to do this crazy end around. I'm going to do a, a, a fade to a 5'10 wide receiver. I'm going to do something that you don't expect. When in reality, it's like, dude, hand it to 31. He leads the NFL with 16 rushing touchdowns. But where I think he probably doubts himself, not himself, he, he gets a little bit more doubt casted in his mind, though, is because of those offensive line injuries that we just talked about. It's I don't know if I can trust my guy to line up a guy from the front of you and beat him and power my way into the end zone because we're playing with potentially a backup left tackle, a third string guard, uh, uh, a guy that's never played center before this year. We don't even know if he's going to play this year, a backup right guard. We have one starting right tackle left. So that's where I think some of this, like he's kind of getting cute. He's getting witty with it because maybe he doesn't trust the backups, but I'm with you. I just, I don't see it happening until we get healthier up front. Next question here from Chris. Would you switch up the return man on special teams? And I understand why we signed Braxton Berrios with kind of the primary goal and duty of enhancing the special teams, primarily the return game. And it just, it hasn't happened. He's not breaking tackles, breaking off the big returns like we had hoped. I think some of that can be chalked up that he's battling some nagging injuries as well but why I would leave Braxton Berrios as punt and kick return. What are your other options? I mean, we've seen Cedric Wilson do punt return in the past, but that's best case scenario, call fair catch and just start with where you have the ball. Kick return, you could go HN, you could go Waddle, you could go Hill, but quite honestly, with the injuries we have, I'm not risking it. The best way to handle anything in the return game right now, call fair catch. Let's start at the 25. Because right now with Berrios, it's, if he's returning it from the goal line, best case scenario, we're hoping for no flags and starting at the 20, 25 the way it is. So unfortunately, I think we just we live with what we have at this point in time, just because I don't want to face any additional injuries on something as minuscule as a kick return, which on a good one, what? We're starting at the 40, we're gaining an extra 15 yards. Not worth it, in my opinion. Benjamin has, how can the Dolphins maintain an explosive offense with their current personnel? 
man, just everything I've said so far, I, it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really hard. And what, what I alluded to as I started the video about having a conservative game plan, don't be surprised if we don't see a lot of the explosiveness in this game. I really think the game plan is going to be establish the run game early, get that going. If there's a weakness in this Jets defense, it's against the run. We exploited that pretty well in the first matchup against them. Mostert had a pretty nice day. Overall, we, we had a pretty nice day running the ball. But we got to run the ball. We got to protect Tua. You could, it was fairly evident, at least to me, in that game against Tennessee. When you weakened the offensive line by Connor Williams leaving, when you took Tyreek Hill off the field, Tua it looked panicked. And it's because he didn't have the time. He didn't have the, the quick, it's two, 2.4 seconds, I'm getting the ball to Tyreek. He's off the field. He didn't have that. Now, he doesn't trust those guys that are in front of him to really hold up protection. He seems a little bit skittish. He's squirming all over the place. And, and, it, and, it, and it showed. And it showed with our lack of production, our lack of big plays, lack of being able to su sustain drives. So, yeah, I think we're going to go into this game with a fairly vanilla play calling because it's not like the Jets are one of those teams that boom, points, boom, points, boom, points. I don't think we're going to see a lot of back and forth in this game. And that's just me speculating, but that's how I would see this game playing out. So, yeah, I don't think we're going to see an explosive offense this week. Beyond this week, if we can get a little bit healthier up front, if we can figure out the center position, then I think it comes back. But if we don't get any healthier up front, it's going to be on McDaniel. It's going to be on McDaniel to be the ultimate schemer play caller in order to get this explosive offense back. Because like we talked about, the game is in the trenches. We need these guys. We need a healthy Tyreek. It was so evident last week against the Titans. Uh, let's do one more here. After losing to the Titans, can we expect the Dolphins to make a stand by demolishing the Jets on Sunday? Man, I would love to say yes, but everything that I just said right there about a conservative game plan, kind of the, the whole mantra of survive in advance, you don't want to have to say that you're playing survive in advance against the Jets, but it's one of those games because of the injuries where it's just like, let's just escape this game with a win with no more big injuries. That would be such a huge win in this situation. It actually bleeds perfectly to my prediction. I'll get it up there. It's the first time I've had the Dolphins not scoring more than 30 since I can remember. I should have went back and looked. But there's quite a few factors, and it's I don't need to repeat myself too much, but it's everything I just said about the injuries and the game plan. That's one thing. But there's one other aspect of this game, and it's the weather. I'm recording this Saturday afternoon. I just saw a bunch of alerts that Miami is just is, is feeling it with the, the rain and the wind and everything. So we'll have to see how that all plays out. I did check out like an hourly forecast, and it looked like some of the major stuff should subside around game time. But those conditions may play a factor in this as well and may play a factor into that game calling. And what really scares me in that sense, if we're playing with a wet ball, sloppy field conditions, if Liam Eikenberg's at center, if there's a new center, and we've seen the, the center quarterback exchanges struggle both under center and shotgun, whew, we could have our hands full. We honestly could have our hands full. And and we, when we look at this final score, 24, I said it was the first time I don't have the Dolphins scoring 30 in who knows how long. Well, Vegas only has this over under. I believe it's at 36 and a half. So Vegas is saying, yep, Dolphins are injured. Jets have a good defense, especially a good secondary. And there's going to be bad weather. We're, we might not see fireworks in this game, especially with that conservative game plan that we're likely going to end up seeing in this one. So a lot of running, grind it out. I don't care. Just get the damn victory. But that is my time for today. I will be back after the game doing a recap. But like I said, get subscribed if you haven't done so already. Thank you to everyone that submitted questions. Try to get to as many as possible. Drop your final scores in the comments. Let's carry on the conversation leading up until game time. That is my time for today, Dolphins fans. Enjoy the game, and we will see you after the show, after the game, for a new show. Fins up.